first, The Jesus Man, the story of David Davis. It's narrated by Rennie Cutforth. This is the story of David Davis, a young Welshman who, with his wife and young son, traveled out to China before the last war to begin life as a missionary. In the years which followed, he experienced some of the greatest spiritual joys a missionary can ever hope to find. And at the hands of the Japanese invaders, he endured experiences which the average man would not hope or possibly even want to survive. His part in this dramatized program is played by Richard Bebb. Our story starts in January 1935. The place is Seichao, a mission station just outside the ancient walled town of Jinchong in the wild, mountainous province of Shanxi. Mr. Davis, welcome to Seichao Mission. Oh, hello there. We didn't expect a reception committee. Oh, look at those children lined up here. <laughs> oh, aren't they pretty? Even though the roads are non-existent and the traps are terrible, news travels ahead of you in this country. Well, I can tell you we're glad to be here. Oh, it's been a long, hard journey. Now, uh, you're Mr. I'm Mr. Bastard, in charge of the mission here. Uh, yes, of course. Now, this is Jean, my wife, and our son, Murray. Who's only two and a half, I'm afraid. <laughs> Isn't he lovely? <laughs> oh, yes. And this is Miss Gladys Aylmer. Uh, she runs the neighboring mission station at Yancheng. Oh, hello, Gladys. What is it? Well, like many things, it's very difficult to define in a single word because of different types of heroism. You can have communal heroism, such as in a village, village in Derbyshire when the Black Death arrived in the middle. The natural thing in all Europe was to flee, to escape the dreadful, agonizing death of the Black Death. But in that one village of Iam, they stayed put and nobody fled. Dozens of them died, and that was communal heroism. Then you have common faith, people are religiously faithful. I've chosen Gladys Aylward, who's a parlour maid in North London, mm. and saved thousands of lives in China during the war between the Japanese and the Chinese. It cost her 47 pounds, which she saved up for two years as a parlour maid to get out to China in the first place. Amazing lady. She borrowed a fur coat and a kettle, and off she went from Euston Station and came back 20 years later, a true hero. In 2011, Sir Ranulph Fiennes published a book called My Heroes and selected the extraordinary story of Gladys Aylward for inclusion in his list of heroes. In 1958, Gladys's biography, The Small Woman, was adapted for the big screen, starring Casablanca's Ingrid Bergman as the diminutive parlour turned missionary. Flash forward to 1987 and Steven Spielberg's Empire of the Sun is released in the cinemas. The film is based on J.G. Ballard's semi-autobiographical novel about a British boy called Jim, who was interned in a Japanese concentration camp in China during the Second World War. J.G. Ballard was born in 1930, two years before my grandfather Murray, who, along with his brother Paul, was also interned in the very same camp the Ballard story is based upon, Lunghua Civilian Assembly Centre. Murray and Paul were the children of David Davis, the Welsh missionary who became the superintendent to Gladys Aylward. The Inn of the Sixth Happiness and Empire of the Sun are two films based on stories in which my Welsh great-grandfather David Davis was directly involved. I think it is significant therefore that both films have an implicit Welsh connection. The Chinese scenes in The Inn of the Sixth Happiness were shot in Beth Gellert in North Wales, where an entire walled city based on China's Yancheng was constructed in the Welsh mountains, in David's native country. On the other hand, Empire of the Sun features a memorable scene in which Jim says goodbye to a young Japanese pilot who had become an unlikely friend. This moment is made all the more poignant by the solo performance of a Welsh lullaby called Siu Gan. Yeah. 
My great-grandfather David Davis, along with his wife and children, was also interned in this camp, and his Welsh charm was remembered, not least by Peggy Abkazi, who kept a diary for her time there. On August the 23rd, 1945, she describes a rather dour fire chief, but then goes on to write that, Anything we have learned is thanks to his assistant, a Welshman full of charm, who has the art of making even a bucket chain interesting. This was surely my great-grandfather, David Davis, who, aside from being a fire officer, became the camp's official barber, the football captain, a teacher in the camp's school, and the camp's official cook. And this was all whilst he was recovering from years of intense suffering and imprisonment by the hands of the Japanese invaders. So who was David Davis? How did he end up in China during the Second World War? Why was he arrested by the Japanese? And why is his story worth remembering today? <laughs>